Greetings, friends. Uh, Pastor Paul here with a recap of what we discussed last week at Bible study. Given the report of Timothy, as we heard about in chapter 3, Paul begins now to address concerns about and questions from the Thessalonian believers. Uh, all of this is done with one purpose in mind, living in a manner that pleases God, a practice that all believers continue in throughout their lives, not just back then, but for us today. So the first topic is about abstaining from sexual immorality, uh, contrasting strongly with the world then and really with the world today, the believers were called to be restrained in their sexual activity. Uh, what believers do with their bodies is subject to the judgment of God. Furthermore, as there would have been many culturally permissible outlets for sexual activity that exploited others at the time, such as sex with slaves or with temple prostitutes or really just with others who couldn't say no, Paul uh, reminds them that God will punish, or it could even be translated avenge, those actions. The point is this. God makes us to be holy and obedient to God, uh, which is to be reflected even in as something as difficult and hard to control as our sexual desires. Next, Paul addresses a problem that uh, it must have come from a question there, but we don't quite know what it's speaking about, but it's of uh, people being idle. And this is more than just laziness, and it could be due to the fact that people are thinking that Jesus will return, but we'll talk to that uh, and return imminently, but we'll talk about that in a, a little bit. Um, Paul encourages them to reflect on the example that Paul and Silas and the other believers set when they came and shared the gospel uh, for the first time. Uh, they encourage them to work hard and not be a burden to others like Paul and them were not a burden to the Thessalonians. It's also worth noting here that Paul, who is a tent maker by trade, highlights that we're to do our work in a way that would win the respect of others. Uh, rather than being people who are disconnected from the world, we are to live in all aspects of our lives as a great example uh, a great example to others and point to the perfect example of Jesus. So even in the work that we can do, uh, work with our hands, work that many times would not have been glorified in that day, that this can be an example to the glory of God. And think about the trade that Jesus himself took, uh, often uh, remembered as a carpenter, working with his hands. Uh, don't you think that the work that he would have done would have been excellent? Finally, Paul speaks about believers who have died and also on the topic of the return of Jesus. And this is something that he's going to talk about as we move into chapter five. Uh, as followers of Jesus, we are called to live and think differently than those who don't share the hope of the resurrection and return of Jesus. Now, while death still causes us grief, we believe that as people who are in Jesus, we follow the pattern of Jesus. We are to live our lives in Jesus and prepare for his return. Uh, should believers die, they die in Jesus and they will be awakened for his return. That's why they use the, the language of falling asleep in Jesus, I think. It gives this nice picture because what do we do when we fall asleep? We wake up. So this is the hope of the people of Jesus, and this is why we can be encouraged and even encourage one another uh, as we face the pain and the grief of death. Whether this is the grief and pain that come uh, from seeing brothers and sisters in Christ die, or whether this is the face, uh, this is the pain and grief that we might face in ourselves uh, as we face our own mortality. So this week, we're going to conclude our study of 1 Thessalonians with chapter 5. And I want to invite you to join us Tuesday night at 7 o'clock on Zoom as we finish out this study. Take care. Blessings.